I'm Andy Newman for the New York Times. Staten Island is kind of a weird place. It's one of the five boroughs of New York City, but it doesn't really feel like part of the city at all. Most people who don't live on the island know only a couple of things about it. One is that it must be the place at the other end of the Staten Island ferry ride. The other is that to get to New Jersey and points west, you might have to drive across it. But Staten Island is home to about half a million people. It's got some of the most remote nature spots in New York City. There's all kinds of stuff to see. And I decided the best way to see it would be on foot. So a few weeks ago, rather than get off the ferry and then get right back on like all the other tourists do, I packed a tent and a sleeping bag and a canteen. And I set off to hike around the coast of the sixth largest island in the continental U.S. I have a bunch of clothes. I got all my notebooks. I even have a video camera, which should be very interesting. I'm just going to go this way. I'm going to have to somehow get across this body of water called the Fresh Kills. I hope not to have to actually climb onto the West Shore Expressway because it's a very busy highway. Down here, there was a lot of historic stuff in Tottenville. And then I'll cross under the Verrazano, come back up to the top, and then go back to Manhattan. So I'm all ready to go. The boat is going to leave in a few minutes, and uh, I'll be off. The first two days I covered about 12 miles, which doesn't seem like much, but it was enough to give me huge blisters. The second night I wound up in a little town on the west shore called Travis, where I was adopted by a bunch of the local youth. They said if I had a drink with them, they'd show me a great camping spot. Yo, Andy, okay, well, there's a shipwreck gonna... over there, too, if you want to yeah. walk through the rocks. There's yeah, shipwreck. let's that, walk through the rocks. That doesn't sound like a good place to sleep, No, no, though. let's walk through the rocks. No, 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 no. no. I, I, I got to go to sleep. Oh. I'm really... So that was fun. Uh, or at least I'm still alive. It is the morning of day three. I'm in a tent on a beach about a third of the way down the west coast uh, in a neighborhood called Travis. Over there you can see today's destination. That is an island called Prawls Island. It's a bird sanctuary run by the uh, city park department and we hope to get a boat and go over there. Before I met my two guides from the parks department, I thought I should take a bath in the Arthur Kill. Here's our boat. So this is Frank on the right and Frank on the left. Frank on the right is our pilot. Frank on the left is the land guy who's going to call the Coast Guard if we get swept out to sea. And uh, we're ready to shove off. Frank is doing all the work. That's about it. Want me to take the uh, camera back? I'm just panning. What's that? I'm just panning. So we're having a quicksand problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. This is the high part of Paul's Island. We have a bunch of grass, some trees, and a lot here. Well, we're going home. That's the fresh kills down there. Expressway. I have about 10 more minutes to get across. Hopefully the cops won't stop. So here we are. It's day four. We're just about the halfway mark. The weather has been very good so far, but we're expecting rain today. So I'm going to hit the road. This beach is not as much fun as I thought it was going to be. It's strewn with garbage. It smells like seafood stew cooked in an old rubber boot and left to sit for about a week. But about an hour up the coast from the southern end of the island, you suddenly come across these mysterious stone pyramids. They go on one after another after another for maybe a quarter mile. When the pyramids started showing up about 10 years ago, a lot of people thought it was some kind of satanic ritual spot. But the guy who makes them turns out to be a mild-mannered zookeeper at the Staten Island Zoo. His name is Doug Schwartz, and he's not much of a Satanist at all. I always have to kind of do a PR thing and make sure that everyone's clear that I have no uh, heavy metal uh, listening habits or anything that would uh, attach me to the dark side. The next impressive waterfront structure I came across was a little bit different. 
This is the Sagain Mansion. It was built in 1837. It's got 15 rooms, about 27 acres of land, 20 horses, 15 peacocks, and the lord of the mansion is a man named George Burke. He sold the house to the city a few years ago, but he gets to live in it until he dies, so he essentially lives in a museum. And of all his treasures, his favorite is a little statue of a dog. The Queen of France, Marie Antoinette, had a uh, cat and a dog, and she had bronze statues made of each. And this is the bronze statue of her poodle. And this is the only one? As far as I know, this is, this is it. And what do you know about the hairstyle of this poodle? I don't know. It's probably just called the poodle cut. So that's the Burke Mansion. Let's see if we can find an even nicer place to stay tonight. Goodbye, Sagan Burke Mansion. So we're on the beach in Great Kills Park. There's something interesting. You see up on the right that thin line of what look like buildings? That is Brooklyn. It's the first time I've seen the rest of New York City in four days. in Midland Beach. I'm at the Midland Beach Motor Inn, which is just a block from the ocean right here on Midland Avenue. It's a mere $55 a night, which seems almost too good to be true. Hello? I was a little concerned that there might be a couple of bed bugs in the room, so I consulted with a colleague. You wrote that bed bug story, right? If you're in a place, like in a, uh, in a motel, and you want to check for bed bugs? Are there any telltale signs that you can look for? They, they like to kind of hide in cracks and wood, in, you know, joints, um, wood, you know, you know, in walls, uh, in the bed. But if you were me, would you just sleep on the floor in your sleeping bag? Sleeping on the floor will not do anything. They'll find you. They'll find me. There was a big hole in the mattress, but my night of rest was bed bug free. On the last day, I hiked under the Verrazano Bridge and back to the ferry. In six days, I'd covered about 45 miles, and I felt like I'd only begun to scratch the surface of Staten Island. Next time, I think I'll go for two weeks. For the New York Times, I'm Andy Newman.